You. 
And there's not 
Hey church, welcome. It's so good to have you with us today. And from wherever you're watching and uh, any of our locations or our online campus, 
we want to welcome you today. Praying for all of our Queensland uh, locations, our Coomera location, and also our Logan location. We want you to know that Tini and I are praying for you. We love you. God is on the throne. And also, we want you to reach out to us. You can reach out to us through, uh, through email or reach out to us through, uh, through phone. But we want you to reach out to us. You don't have to do life alone. We're available to pray for you and believe that God's going to bring us through in the name of Jesus. So, so, so good to have you with us today. And today we're beginning a brand new series, which I think is just such an incredibly important message for our time. And the, the, the title of the series is simply called Stronger. Somebody shout Stronger. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, I'm reading now the King James Version. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. See, we can, we can gain strength, not from our own selves, but we can gain strength from God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Exodus chapter 3, uh, we're going to read from uh, verse 3 today. Exodus chapter 3 and beginning in verse 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought to himself, I will go over and check out the strange side. Of course he would go over because there's a bush burning and it's uh, not burning up. So, uh, so I will go over and see the strange side, why this bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed heard the misery of my people in Egypt. I love the fact that God always hears the cries of His people. He says, I've heard the misery of, of my people. I've heard them crying and out because of their slave drivers. And I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land into a good, spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the, the, the Mozibites, and the Jebusites, and all the ites. And Moses answered in verse chapter 4, verse 1, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? And then the Lord said to him, What's that in your hand? A staff, he replied. Now this is such an incredibly powerful moment in Moses' life. Moses, at this point in time, had been walking around the desert for 40 years. He was a shepherd. He traded traded in the kingdom, and he was a prince of Egypt. And he traded that in. That that was no longer his identity, no longer his his expectation, no longer uh, was he that person of privilege. And now he is here. He is walking around the desert for 40 years, content to look after the sheep. He he'd given away the the fact that God might ever use him to do something significant. He'd given away his hopes and his aspirations. He'd given away what he knew was the call inside of his heart. He'd given all of that away. And now here he is looking after the sheep. And in the middle of doing his every day, in the middle of doing what he's doing, God turns up. I love the fact that no matter what you're doing, you could be just doing your everyday thing. Maybe you're, maybe you're a parent looking after your children and God turns up. Maybe you're a teacher at school and God turns up. Maybe you're running a business and God turns up. I love the fact that God turns up in our every day. And so there he is, Moses. He's walking around. This bush sits on fire and it doesn't burn up. And he says, he thinks to himself, oh, I'll go and check that out. I bet you would go and check that out. He goes and checks it out. And as he steps, he walks to it, which, which lets us know that God always knows how to get your attention. God might use a bush. 
or God might use a, a message from somebody or God might use a word out of the scriptures that come alive in your heart. God always knows how to get your attention. And when he goes to the bush, God begins to speak to him. Moses, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And Moses, I have a purpose for you. I want you to know today, if you're watching this, wherever you're watching this from, that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he has a purpose for you. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter, matter what part of the world you live in. God has a purpose for your life. And, it, and here he is, Moses, when he'd given up on all purpose, given up on his dreams, God never gave up on him. God begins to speak to him. He says, I've got a great purpose for you, Moses. And Moses does the thing that we all do. Whenever, whenever greatness, uh, when, whenever we're confronted with something great, we do the thing that everybody does, which is go, well, well you must have the wrong person. God puts His hand on you. He says, no, 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 that, that's too big for me. That must be for somebody else. God turns up and He says, Moses, what's in your hand? Moses looks at what's in his hand. He says, all I have is a staff. And then he says, take that and use it. I want to encourage you today that, that there are three thoughts that I want to share with you as it pertains to being strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Come on, I want everybody watching right now, I want you to shout that word stronger. Yeah, in fact, write it even right now on that, uh, on that chat, stronger. I'm prophesying right now that in the middle of restrictions and in the middle of lockdowns and in the middle of doctor's reports, in the middle of financial reports, that God is calling us to be strong in Him. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The people of God, the believers of God are not dictated to or defined by their circumstances. They're defined by the God that lives in us. And even though everything around us may be crumbling down, the strength of God is rising up in His people. And if you believe that today, somebody shout, Amen. Come on, give me some hands up emojis. Amen. And be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And there are three lessons that we want to draw from Moses today as it pertains to being strong in the Lord. Number one, start where you are. My friend, I don't care what's going on around you, you can start right where you are. See, one of the great challenges or one of the great traps is that often we want to start where they are or we want to start where we were. My friend, when it comes to being strong in the Lord, we can't start where somebody else is. We can't start by trying to do what somebody else is doing. Even right now, uh, when, you, when it comes to athletics and when it comes to racing, you cannot race in somebody else's lane. It is literally illegal to, to change lanes. So as you're running, you've got to stay in your lane. And my friend, when it comes to the purpose of God for your, li for your life, don't change lanes. Be who God's called you to be and start where you are. And equally, we can't start where we were. See, oftentimes we're trying to start where we were, what we used to be, how we used to do things, uh, uh, where we used to live and, and what we used to do. We, we, my friend, can I encourage you, don't start where you were because where you were is not where you are today. But my friend, start where you are. My friend, you don't have to be great to start but you must start in order to be great. And can I encourage you, friend, just start where you are. Start with what's in front of you. Start right now where you are. About a year ago, um, you know, I was uh, personally going to the gym a lot and, and I felt good about my health. And I was going to gym several times a week and was walking every day. And, and, uh, and it was just amazing. And I, and I just felt incredible health. I felt, I felt great. And then as we hit the beginning of this year, well, I had a few small health challenges, nothing major, but I had some health challenges. And then that just kind of stopped me from going to the gym as often. And in fact, I haven't been to the gym for a while now. So when I think about that, I think about my health. I think, oh, you know, a year ago I used to be this and now I can't do that. Well, when I go back to start, I can't start lifting the weights that I was lifting a year ago. I've just got to start at the beginning again. And my friend, that's okay. It's okay to acknowledge, hey, listen, I'm not where I was. This is where I am today. You can start where you are today. Come on, I want to encourage your friend. What is it? What is it the thing that's God speaking to you about starting today? Hey, maybe it's starting a new devotional today. Hey, maybe it's starting a new prayer group today. 
Maybe it's starting a new business venture today. But whatever it is, maybe it's starting starting a health kick routine today. But whatever it is, friend, can I encourage you today? You can start where you are. Come on. If you believe in God, you're about to start something today. Give me some hands up emojis right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's about to start. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus. Somebody's about to start. In fact, somebody's about to start even the journey of trusting the Lord with your finances. Somebody's about to start and even make a commitment to weekly gathering together in the house of the Lord. Can I encourage you today? Start where you are. Somebody shout, start today. Oh, somebody's about to start something great in the name of Jesus. And the second lesson we can learn from Moses is is this thought, take what you have. God said to Moses, Moses, after he said, I'm going to do great things through your life. Moses' response says, but what if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe that you actually sent me? And then God says to Moses, what's in your hand? And he says, a staff. He says, take it. What's in your hand? See, God said to Moses to take the thing that was ordinary, that wasn't glamorous, It was a thing that he'd been using for the last 40 years. God told Moses to take up the staff. See, the staff represented his past. Because when he'd come out of Egypt as the prince, he picked up the staff. So the staff represented where he'd come from. It was a symbol of everything he'd given up. The staff was ordinary. And at the same time, now, God's saying, take the stuff. So now it represents his future. Now the very thing that was a reminder of his past, God is asking him now to use it for his future. And sometimes we allow those things of the past, the past hurts and the past disappointments, the past losses, the past failures. We look at that and we say, oh, I can't do that again. I don't want to try. I don't want to believe. I, don't, I couldn't do that. But we must understand that the very thing that represents the past is the key to the future. And God says, take the staff. See, it's one thing to have a staff, and it's a whole other thing to take it. It's one thing to have a blessing from God, and it's a whole other thing to take that blessing from God. It's one thing. To be gifted with something, it's a whole nother thing to use it. Isn't it amazing that God would choose the thing that represents the past as a key to the future? And isn't it amazing that God knew what was in the past, the reason that Moses was here in the desert? Uh, Isn't it amazing that God knew all of that? And God still had a plan for this man. And I want to encourage you today, God still has a plan for you. God still has something great for you. But the key, my friend, is to take what's in your hand and use it. When we were growing up in church, we used to sing a song called, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Well, I want to encourage your friend, There are some people right now and the enemies try to rob you of your joy. Well, take that joy back in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, take it. That's it. The enemies try to rob you of peace, but God's giving you back your peace. Take that peace in the name of Jesus. My friend, there are people watching and the enemy's been trying to rob, steal and destroy from you. But I believe right now, I believe the word of the Lord to you right now is to take it back. Take that joy. Take your peace Take your hope. Take your confidence. Take your healing. Come on, somebody. Somebody's taking it back. Take what God put in your hand and see God do something miraculous with it in the name of Jesus. There's a story in the Scripture where a widow goes up to the prophet and asks the prophet for help. And the prophet says to her, what's in your house? And she says, initially she says, well, nothing. I've got nothing except for a little bit of oil. 
then he says, well, take that oil and grab the jar, grab jars from your neighbors and keep pouring the oil until it runs out. My friend, you have what it takes to do what God's called you to do. It is in your reach. It is in your hand. But take it in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, take it today. And the third thing that we can learn from Moses is to do what you can with what you have. Do what you can with what you have. Do what you can and don't feel guilty about what you can't. My friend, there's a great difference between living according to what I should versus what I can. I know for me, uh, uh, your pastor is a recovering perfectionist. And for me, it's oftentimes, you know, you just want everything to be perfect and you just want everything to be awesome. And oftentimes we can, you know, we can miss the 95% that's amazing because we're searching for the 5%. Perhaps even as a, as a personal standard, you know, as a parent, it's oftentimes like, oh, I should have done this for my child. I should have done more. I should have done this. And, and so often we can be caught up and ensnared in guilt and, uh, and anxiety from all the things we should. Well, my friend, the Bible promises us this. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Our God is a God of I can. So do what you can. Not what you can't, not what you should, but do what you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if I, I, I can't get to it, if I can't do it, well, that's okay. Because as long as I've done what I can, then what I can is good enough. John Wesley wrote, do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can can I encourage your friend do what you can with what you have nothing more do what God's called you to do nothing more so my friend Three lessons that we've learned today from Moses about being stronger in the Lord is to start where you are. Start today. Just start where you are. Just right now, start where you are. Not where you were, not, not where you want to be, but where you are. Start where you are. And take what you have. Take what God's given to you. What, what has God gifted to you? What is it that God, that, that you find easy to do that other people go, wow, take it. Take that. That's the gift. Take it. Receive it. Offer it to the Lord and see what God does with it. And do what you can with what you have. Do everything you can with what you have. But don't do anything more than that. Don't do what you can't. Do what you can in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, if you're re receiving this message today, I'd love to pray with you. And I just believe there are people right now, and I sense the strength of the Lord coming to you. Even now, through, these, through, through this message, I just sense that the Lord is rising up in people bringing strength and the power of His might and so my friend if that's you too I'd love to pray with you today Father I just pray for your church I just thank you Lord God for everybody who's watching online I thank you for all of our locations that our locations are getting stronger but I pray for every home every family I pray for every person today and I pray Lord God for the strength of the Holy Spirit I pray Lord God for, for your peace I'm praying God for your, a sense of your overflowing joy. I'm praying for a sense of hope. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. I'm praying that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. And I declare that over your church today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching today and you don't know Jesus, if you're watching today, you're not right with God. My friend, I'd love to pray with you. And in a moment, I'm going to simply count to three. And when I get to three, if that's you, you're saying, yeah, preach, include me in that prayer because I'm not right with God. And I once was right with God, but I've drifted from God. Or maybe I've never never had a relationship with God ever before. And then my friend, this, this prayer is for you. So if, if that's you, friend, and I'd love to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you, when I count to three, simply type yes in the chat or, or, or click the link and we'd I'd love to be able to pray for you. But right now, if that's you, friend, you don't know Jesus, one. Or two, you're not right with God. Three, if that's you. God bless you. I see you. And right now, Lord God, I just thank for every person who's responding to Christ. If you lifted your hand or if you responded or 
if you click that link, then I want you to pray this prayer out loud. And the whole room is going to pray this prayer with you out loud. And as you pray this prayer, I want you to pray this prayer from your heart. The Bible calls that faith. Say it together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me so much. You died on the cross and rose again to forgive me of my sin. From today on, I'm living for you. I give you my whole heart. I give you my whole life. I'm holding on to you because you always held on to me. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Bless every person who's prayed that prayer, Lord. I'm thanking you for bright days ahead. I'm thanking you, Lord God, that the past is removed. And Lord God, that the future is glorious. I thank you for that for every person. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen, amen, church. We're so proud of you. And I want to thank you so much for being the most incredible church, for loving on each other and the way you just care for one another. It truly is inspiring. I'm so, so blessed. And, and I want to thank you, church, for your incredible generosity when it comes to tithes and offerings. Because of your generosity, lives are changed. And we continue to see the kingdom of God extended and expanded and uh, continue to see more people discover the life-giving message that is Jesus. So I want to thank you for your, uh, for your faithfulness and giving. Well, church, I want to thank you for joining us today. And I'm praying this week you're going to have a great week. That you're going to start and that you're going to take what you have and that you're going to do what you can in the name of Jesus. Father, bless every person. I'm thanking you for strength that is found in you. I declare your blessing over your church. Have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you again real soon. Can't wait to see you again. God bless you.